On this episode, I talk about Kickstarter, Twitter, Facebook, and finally, Ello. You keep asking questions, I'll keep trying to answer them. Everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and you're watching the Ask Gary V Show, episode 27. Fun fact about the number 27, D. Milner, our number one pick from last year, is coming back off the injured list to play this Sunday against the Chargers. Quick little prediction, 37 Chargers, seven Jets. Let's go. David asks, Instagram seems great for jabs, but not for right hooks. Any ideas or predictions on using it to make right hooks? David, there's an interesting thing here and I wanna go, I'm gonna go deep today because I got, just got whiff of the questions and so this could be a very deep episode. A deep and deep episode, I said it twice. Deep and deep episode of the Ask Gary V show is coming guys. So like a lot of you have left in the comments like I like when you get very detailed. I'm getting detailed today. Let's get into it. First, you have to debate the philosophy of a holistic social media approach of should you just use Instagram as a jabbing platform by itself? Should Instagram be a place where you're jabbing because you also know a lot of your fans follow you on Twitter and Facebook and things of that nature and a lot of times, I mean look, I use Instagram as jabbing for the first couple years, a lot of selfies, a lot of sneaker shots, right? But if you've noticed with the Ask Gary V show, I'm using Instagram as a right hook platform lately. If you look by percentage over my last 15 to 25 photos, as a matter of fact, lately I've tried to throw some more jabs in because I felt there was a little more, too much right hook going on. I'm now putting up 15 second versions of this episode and in the copy saying, go into my profile because in my profile I'm linking to the current episode. So the only way to actually drive people out of Instagram is by changing your URL in the edit profile part of your profile and so that's the way to throw a right hook and so yes you could put a piece of creative on Instagram that works and then in the copy drive people that see that into your profile and then link out and convert your right hook as driving them there and so I've done both um, though I for a long time and still probably at this point this is why I'm testing I'm always going against my own stuff all of you could call me out and say Gary didn't you say not to do that and thank you I'm always going against my own POVs to always taste right now I'm not sure exactly where I fit but like Intuitively, I'm feeling that the jabbing on Instagram is a great way to go. So if you look at your whole thing as a holistic play and you're on all these platforms and your core group is following you in multiple places, maybe Instagram is where you're jabbing, maybe Facebook is where you're throwing that right hook. So that's the deep, putting steak on the bone today, answer to that one. Mal Dream asks, what are your thoughts on using Kickstarter to start a business? Mount Dream, I wanna climb that mountain. Mount Dream Kickstarter. Uh, first of all, I think it's a great way to start a business. Tons of people have uh, started businesses on the back of Kickstarter. Didn't Oculus Riff start on the back of Kickstarter and sold for two billy on Facebook? So what do I think? I think it works. Here's what else I think. I think there's a lot of people that put shit businesses on Kickstarter. This is a classic question of, do you think this platform can work to do X? The answer is always yes especially when it's already happened. The problem is, do you suck at it? Do I think people can make a million dollars selling on eBay? Yes, the talented ones. Do I think you can make a lot of money by making YouTube videos? Yes, the talented ones. Do I think that you could become a Vine celebrity on Vine and make lots of money, millions? Yes, the talented ones. And so over and over, my classic, do I think a basketball has an ROI? I do, LeBron makes a shit, LeBron will be a billionaire because of a basketball. That's the ROI of it. I will not. So can Kickstarter be a great platform to kick off a business? It can. But people that have bought into this notion of, oh, it's easy, just go on Kickstarter, people are gonna give you money, and you start a business, they're lost. L-O-S-T, lost. And that is the problem in our society right now. All of this works. Do you have the talent to execute? Yo, what's up, Gary and D-Rock, of course. D-Rock. My name's Daniel Dennehy, I'm a music producer Daniel. slash freestyle soccer athlete with Red Bull. <laughs> Check out my freestyle soccer videos on Instagram. At the I'm plug, Dan I love the plug. Okay, get that out the way, no one wants to hear about that. My well, question drop is, it. is there ever such thing as too much jabbing? You know, like, is there ever any time where you should just not really give out much content or maybe not reply to everybody so you keep a sort of mystique or a bit of an aura about you? Or should we just open the floodgates and just have everything transparent. What's your thoughts on that? Thank you very much. God bless. Peace. Peace. D, 
as I'm gonna call you. Uh, this is a great question and this is where I, you know, I wrote that piece, maybe we should link this, Stunwin, follow along here, of the one like, maybe my advice isn't good for you. Th- yeah, the answer is yes. There's an absolute time where there's too much jabbing and there's an absolute time where maybe you should not be in the exact jabbing business at all. You actually asked two questions, D. You asked, is there too many jabs? Sure, the reason I call, wrote the book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, is because the people that I thought best understood social media were in the jab, 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 jab business. And so, the other question you're asking is, should I build a brand or create a scenario where there's no jabbing? You know who did that? Apple. Apple is just in the right hook business. Look at Apple's social media engagement. Look at Apple's real care for their fans over that 10 year period. They just made the best crap they could make and then they dominated for that period. Now then Samsung came along and started playing with that vulnerability and now we have what we have. But for a lot of people there's mystique. Mystique or exclusivity, look, there's a business model for me. What if I just, here's a good example. I'm announcing right now that the Ask Gary Vee show is paywall only $4 an episode. How many of you are paying? How many? Leave in the comments, don't me. And here's what I know, 90% of you are not paying. But if I have enough of 10% of you paying for four bucks an episode, it might be a better ROI than what I'm doing. I don't believe that because I like the jab business and I like building up the equity and the awareness and you passing on the video, you know, to people. Caught that D-Rock? And you know, I want that, oh that was, Passing on would be sharing. I actually did subscribe call to actions. Mm-hmm. Subscribe anyway. And so, uh, <laughs> and so um, you know, there's absolutely a way to play through exclusivity. Like I, the reverse of me is that person and that works too. It's about self-awareness. Do you know why I play the jab business? Because I like you guys. I just like people. If I didn't like people, I would go the other way. Never get to me paywall, hard to get to, secret events where you pay a lot of money, have an island where I pay, charge you a lot of money to come to, but I like people, I wanna touch all of you. Yeah, I know, that sounded weird, but I wanna touch all of you, and not that weird way. And so, um, the answers were clearly in that given response, I'm on fire today. William asks, is there any strategy behind following thousands of people on Twitter? There's an absolute strategy to following thousands of people. I employ it. Uh, I do not consume content that much from Twitter or if I do, I'm thrilled to get the real stuff along with the emotional stuff. Too many people are utilitarian, it's black and white. I'm only gonna follow people that put out good content or things that I'm interested in because you use it as truly your news consumption and I think that's great. As a strategy for a public figure, which I am, Z-list, but I am, It's incredible how much it means to somebody when I go and follow them. And I'm very flattered by that and I get it because I get super pumped if a Jets player, I freaked out when David Nelson, our third, fourth receiver last year followed me on Twitter because it meant something to me so I understand it. I have the empathy for that. So what is the strategy? Guys, you've been watching the show, we're on 27 now. I'm in the depth game. I love the width game and I do a lot of strategies for it but I'm in the depth game. That's why I'm doing this, the unscalable. How many minutes late are we for this, uh, this taping today? 15? Yeah. Right? I got real problems right now. Things are popping up on my calendar right now. I got problems right now because it's also a heavy Jewish holiday and I gotta get the hell out of here before the sun comes down or I'm in big trouble and I'm trying to squeeze in but I'm in the depth game. I didn't skip today. I'm taping for you because I wanna continue to bring you the stuff you want. And you know what's the stuff you want? You want me to follow you on Twitter because it feels good. Because you get, you get to brag around your friends who are also into social media or the Jets or wine and like, Gary, you follow me. I get this as a consumption. You know, it's funny. I look at stars, celebrities. They go on red carpets and they run into another star that just bubbled up and the one person's new so of course they're a fan of this person but then they're like, oh I'm a fan of you and they're blown away because they're still fans. We're all still fans no matter who you are. People that are way bigger than me when they find out that I tweet at them or favorite something or say something about them they get so crazy and I'm like, you? What? I mean we're all fans forever and so there's an absolute strategy on following a bunch of people. It is about giving them something they want. And when you give people something they want, they appreciate it. Everybody asks, what do you think of Ello? All right, all right, all right, I get it, I get it. It's been building, it's been building. First of all, I'm on Ello, a lot of people don't know that because it's Ello slash Vaynerchuk because somebody squatted Gary V-E-E, give it back, give it back. Uh, 
I think Elo's got some problems. Uh, I think that when you raise venture capital money like Elo did, 430,000, I'm hearing 435, uh, there's a little bit of a problem there because they're gonna have to build a business model and so the question becomes, if they're not gonna sell your data, that means they're gonna have to charge you. And so my question for you, and leave it in the comments, this could be the question of the day, along with give me some of the feedback for if you're gonna pay four bucks per episode, is, and then critique the episode. By the way, I wanna make a stake in the ground here for episode 27. Too many of you are literally answering the questions and I get all excited to come in and see what you guys think about today's episode. Can we have a holistic answer, especially for you hardcore Vaniacs in the Vayner Nation. Can you guys do me a favor, the 150, 400 of you, that can you could critique the episodes and tell me this was, for example, today you're gonna say, this is by far the best one ever because you went into such detail, I took a lot out of it. Like, can you give me that? Like, your muscles look bigger. Like, can you give me, like, critiques and then you can answer the question today. Today's question today, jumping in backwards, is will you pay $10 a month for LO, okay? But, like, back into that, if, Look, they're in a business model. VCs want returns on their investment. They didn't just do it for kicks and giggles. These guys, gals, people part of the team, they need to build a product that delivers on that. That is the intent, or at least somewhat, you know, the question becomes, are they gonna charge you for it? Because that's really the only other angle in a social network to really drive there. And they may come up with something innovative and God bless it. And I'm rooting for everybody all the time. My big thing is people don't care that you're selling their data. That's right, let me say it again. People don't care because the dirty little secret, and we're gonna look back at this video in three years, six years, nine years, and I'm gonna look smart again, which is this. We actually want ads that are targeted. I actually wanna see Lionel Richie and Root Beer ads. When I'm in the market for another pair of Pumas or another pair of Nikes like I normally wear, I want to see sneaker ads. We want to see them way, way, way more than you think. And somebody will jump in the comments, three or four of you, and say, no, 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 cool, fine, but the data, my gut, my intuition, the things I'm seeing is, we'll take them if they're good. Once they stop being ads and they start being content, that's the forefront of what I'm trying to push here. That's what's going on back here. When it actually brings you value and then, oh, okay, it sells you, you know, like sports. Like, I actually like sports. No wonder I buy jerseys. Get it? So, couple things. One, I think it's structured with some vulnerabilities. Two, this has happened a bunch of times and we've seen this a bunch of times. The Spora, all this stuff, this happens a lot. Three, so far I'm not in love with the product that much, though I do like that they're moving and they're making changes, so big ups to that team. My intuition early on is, I don't know, I don't see it like becoming the next Facebook by any stretch of the imagination. That being said, this is not normally in the process where I draw a line and make a prediction. I've many times said I'm not Nostradamus, I just know when to react. It's too early for me to make my final call, I wanna see more behavior. But my intuition is they're gonna come out and charge you or do something else that is gonna turn off a lot of people. Not to mention, not as many people theoretically are, you know, excuse me, Too many people theoretically like the notion, but then when it comes to actuality, like we like a lot of things in theory, but then we don't act on them. This feels like one of them for me. You heard the question of the day. You just watched the best episode of this series. I want you to have a phenomenal weekend. And please, Jets, make my prediction wrong. Keep asking questions. I'll keep answering them. On this episode, I answer a bunch of questions, but the funny part is, they're here. 